simply learn. Your pace, your place. Hello, and welcome to the CISA Certified Information Systems Auditor Certification Course by Simply Learn. You have definitely made the right decision to enroll in the CISA course. The invaluable knowledge and skills you are about to encounter by undertaking the CISA course are much sought after, not only locally but in the international sphere. Welcome to this first step towards becoming a global professional through the much-renowned CISA certification course. CISA is a certification offered by ISA CA USA Association. Let's begin with the agenda of this introductory lesson. In this section, we shall look at 15 items, all of which are relevant towards you successfully preparing, sitting and passing the CISA certification exam, which is an internationally recognized certification. We will first discuss CISA, its history and its accreditation board, ISA CA. This is followed by CISA syllabus changes, CISA membership and exam pricing, its audience, value certification and its requirements. Next, we will discuss about requirements for maintaining certification, followed by exam details and question patterns. In the last set, we will look at Simply Learn's tutorial, practical questions, reference material and summary of this lesson. Let us now understand what is CISA. Certified Information Security Auditor, CISA, is a highly sought-after certification for IT audit, IT security and control professionals that is offered worldwide by ISA CA USA, a range of many other professionals dealing with information technology and related processes stand to gain a lot of skills and knowledge from the CISA certification. In the next slide, let's understand how CISA came into existence by looking at its history. Introduced by ISA CA back in 1978, the first CISA exam was monitored in 1981 CISA. A major milestone for CISA which denotes its rigor and focus on impacting key skills, is a recognition by the U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, of CISA as an approved accreditation. It is due to this confidence in CISA that DODs declared it to meet its mandate that information assurance personnel be certified with a commercial accreditation, as per the Information Assurance Technical Category, DOD, 8570.01 M. The CISA designation as a certification has continued to win accolades internationally, having won the Best Professional Certification Program by SC Magazine in 2009. As the number of CISA certified individuals continues to grow globally, the current total number of CISA certified professionals stands at more than 85,000 individuals. In staying true to keeping the curriculum up to date with current global IT-related advancements and issues of control, ISACA did a major review of the curriculum which saw the delivery of a new one in 2011. Notable change in this review was the reduction of domains from the previous six domains to five domains in the new curriculum. Now let's proceed to get introduced to ISACA. ISACA, which was previously known in full as the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, is an international organization that deals with IT governance and was founded in the USA in the year 1969. The organization aims to build a common framework for professionals working in auditing domain and has now adopted to just being referred to as ISACA. Since its formation by Stuart Tymier, ISACA has grown both in stature, professional offering and its global influence with 170 ISACA chapters having been established over 160 countries. ISACA mainly offers four major certifications, namely CISA, Certified Information System Auditor, Trademark, 
CISA registered. Certified Information Security Manager registered. CISM registered. Certified in the Governance of Enterprise IT registered. CGE IT registered. Certified in Risk and Information Systems Control. CRISC registered. As mentioned in the previous slide, on changes in the domains of CISA syllabus, let us look at them in detail in the next slide. CISA syllabus was reviewed in the year 2011, which saw some changes in the structure and composition of CISA domains. The domains were trimmed from six, as was the case in December 2010 and earlier exam sittings, to five domains starting on June 2011 exam. The new CISA syllabus is broken down into five domains or content area within which the candidate is expected to gain an understanding of each domain and the associated percentage. The percentages indicate the emphasis or percentage of questions that will appear in the exam from each domain. Let us look at each domain in detail. Domain 1 the process of auditing information systems, 14%, approximately, 28 questions. Domain 2, governance and management of IT, 14%, approximately, 28 questions. Domain 3, information systems acquisition, development and implementation, 19%, approximately, 38 questions. Domain 4, information systems operations, Maintenance and support, 23%, approximately 46 questions. Domain 5, protection of information assets, 30%, approximately 60 questions. Therefore, let us proceed to understand the new syllabus in the next slide. The practice domains and percentages below indicate the emphasis of questions that will appear in the exam. The job practice analysis was developed and validated using prominent industry leaders, subject matter experts, and industry practitioners. The domains and their definitions are outlined in the slide. In the next slide, let us look at how one can become a member of CISA and its exam pricing. A candidate can opt to register for the CISA exam as a member of ISACA or a non-member. Early bird registration is cheaper by 50 US dollars, while if you register as a member it is again cheaper by 50 dollars, as shown in the table in the slide. ISACA membership is priced at 185 dollars as per the breakdown shown. Remember, the local chapter dues which make part of the membership fees may vary depending on the local chapter you'll be registering under. The local chapter will be based in a particular physical location or city. Let us now look at the professionals who can attend this certification. CISA can be thought of as a must-have in the arsenal of toolkit of any aspiring or practicing IT expert due to the increased complexity and growth in adoption across organizations globally. A CISA designate is therefore in high demand to help these organizations in minimizing IT related risks by assisting to institute necessary controls on information related technology, IT and infrastructure, people and related processes. The range of professionals who would require CISA certification, though not limited to this list, includes IS auditors, consultants, CIOs, also known in some organizations as head of IT or IT director, educator, regulator, IS security professional, internal audit, audit managers, risk and compliance professionals, IT systems administrator, among other IT professionals. So what is it that one will gain on completion of this certificate? Let's discuss this in the next slide. Earning the CISA designation promises a host of gains to those who acquire it. 
apart from boosting the professional's confidence in his or her skills and capabilities. Other benefits include recognition by peers, gaining the employer's confidence, becoming an internal IS or IT controls consultant, among many more. For an employee, this would translate to increased salary, while for a consultant, the CISA designation will give confidence to the client on capabilities of the consultant, which would translate to winning of bids for various security or audit consulting jobs or contracts. Well, now the question would be, how can I become a CISA certified? Passing the CISA exam is the first step in the road to becoming CISA certified. Other additional requirements include making an actual application for certification, which would be vetted by the CISA certification committee. A minimum of five years of experience are required in IT audit or security in which the applicant should show involvement in the CISA subject matter as covered in the five domains. However, there are waivers to the five years such as possession of an academic degree which may be equivalent to two years of experience while a relevant master's degree is equivalent to one year of experience. Please visit ISACA's website for an up-to-date list of waivers. To maintain the CISA certification, the applicant should agree to follow the professional code of ethics following the continuing professional education program CPE requirements as stipulated in the ISACA website as well as adhere to the ISACA's IS auditing standards. Note, application for certification has to be within five years for taking up the CISA exam, otherwise the candidate may have to resit the exam if this period expires. Let's proceed to look into the exam details in the next slide. Once certified and holding the designation CISA registered, one should abide with the requirements in order to maintain the certification. Let's look at these requirements here. Attain and report an annual minimum of 20 CPE hours and attain and report a minimum of 120 CPE hours for a three-year reporting period. For more information, visit the CISA CPE policy on the ISACA website. Submit annual CPE maintenance fees in full to ISACA International Headquarters. Respond and submit required documentation or CPE activities to support the hours reported if selected for an annual audit. Comply with the ISACA Code of Professional Ethics. Next, let us look into the exam details. The CISA exam is a written exam consisting of 200 multiple choice questions and is sat for a duration for four hours which in effect means that the candidate should spend approximately 1 minute and 12 seconds per question in order to complete writing the exam on time. The CISA exam is offered twice every year in the months of June and December. In the year 2012, these exam dates are Saturday 9th of June 2012 and Saturday 10th of December 2012. The exam is reported against a common scale. A scale score is a conversion of a candidate's raw score on an exam to a common scale. ISACA uses and reports scores on a common scale from 200 to 800. For example, the scale score of 800 represents a perfect score with all questions answered correctly. A scale score of 200 is the lowest score possible and signifies that only a small number of questions were answered correctly. A candidate must receive a score of 450 or higher to pass the exam. As we are now aware of the exam pattern, let's discuss about the question pattern in the next slide.
CISA exam is a multiple choice exam with answers to be shaded on an answer sheet using a pencil. It is important that you identify key words such as most, best, first, least, etc. before selecting and shading an answer. This will normally help you better understand the question even before embarking on selecting an answer while assisting you to increase your speed and better manage your time. It is now time to look at the lessons offered in this tutorial by Simply Learn. This tutorial covers five domains and they are as per the syllabus provided by ISACA. Nevertheless, let's look into the details once again. The five domains are Domain 1 the process of auditing information systems, 14%. Domain 2, governance and management of IT, 14%. Domain 3, information systems acquisition, development and implementation, 19%. Domain 4, information systems operations, maintenance and support, 23%. Domain 5, protection of information assets, 30%. This tutorial will also consist of quizzes as we progress and three test papers for checking your knowledge and skills. Let's continue to discuss this on the next slide. As you cover this course, you are provided with practice questions. Please take note this is just to help you in familiarizing yourself with the possible CISA exam look and feel and are not part of your final CISA exam. The objective of providing these practice questions is to provide you with an insight on how CISA questions could be presented in the exam. It should not be used as a source of knowledge. Practice questions may or may not be similar to questions that will appear in the actual exam. These questions should not be considered as a measurement of your ability to answer questions correctly in the exam for that area. Actual exam questions will test your practical application of the knowledge. Now, let us look at the reference material details that may help you in preparing for the exam. Some of the references for CISA are provided here. A complete and comprehensive list of references recommended for study can be found in the CISA Review Manual 2012. Please take your time to go through the slide. This slide provides you the acronyms, terminologies and glossary of items that will be encountered in the CISA certification course, which can be found in the web links mentioned on the slide. We have come to the end of this introductory lesson. Let us quickly summarize. A summary of some of the key points we have looked at regarding CISA certification has been captured for your quick reference. CISA is one among the premium certification aimed at IS auditors and security professionals who have more than five years of auditing experience. The certification was introduced by ISACA back in the year 1979. Till date, more than 85,000 plus people have managed to pass this exam. The exam has 200 questions from five domains and need to be answered in four hours time. Candidates need to score a minimum of 450 marks to pass this exam. The certification add value to professionals with better job salary, recognitions and promotions. Thank you for staying put through this introduction lesson. In the next section, we will start off with Domain 1 of the CISA curriculum, which is the process of auditing information systems. Thank you.